In this video we're going to look at a SARS outbreak and we're going to uh, d uh, do these five tasks. Figure out if the function is linear, f in other words, uh, uh, and all these others. So anyway, if, if you um, want you can print these pages from the website or you can just write down the example and uh, do it. So let's start with determine whether this function is linear. So by all means, you know, press pause, go and print off the pages from the website or um, write it down and then let's continue once you have these numbers in front of you. Okay, so make sure you get these numbers first and then we'll go. Okay, so can you remember how to find the ar find out whether a function is linear when you have a table? And maybe I shouldn't have said this. Yeah, it is find the average growth rate, right? If the average growth rate, ha how can you tell if it's linear then? Do you remember? If the average growth rate is constant or the same each time, right? Um, so if you have a table, do you remember how to calculate the average growth rate from a table? It's something divided by something. Do you remember what that is? It is the change of the output or outputs divided by the change of the inputs, right? Now, this is the inputs. You start with these and these are the outputs. Remember that? In, out, right? And um, this is also called the independent variable. That's called the dependent variable. This is called the um, the function values because this is what we can calculate if we have a formula and all that. So, but I just think the simplest words to use are in and out, right? You start with these and you get these, right? So input, output, right? Anyway, um, calculate the change of inputs or here. So um, let's just quickly tell you what this means. SARS is a disease. I think it's a virus. Um, this is recording the what happened after the outbreak. Now the outbreak happened here, let's say on March the 1st. And there were five SARS patients and that was reported. And then 10 days later there were 21 patients with SARS. And then 20 days later there were 37. And this is all together. It's like the total. So the, the number of people with SARS is increasing here, right? So in any case, if we look at the table, the days are increasing, the number of SARS patients are increasing each time, right? But are they increasing at a constant rate? That's the question. We've got to figure that out. So from 0 to 10 is, is 10 is an increase of 10 days. From 5 to patients to 21 patients is an increase of how many patients? An increase of 16, right? From 10 to 20, oh, so now we have a change of output and a change of input. So we're going to calculate the average growth rate for this data so far. So it's going to be plus 16 over plus 10, which is, so 16 extra patients in 10 days, right? And that makes as a decimal 1.6, okay? Uh, so let's get the change of inputs and outputs for the rest of the table, and if it's constant, then we have a linear function. So I'll do this one, 10 to 20 is 10 more days, 21 to 37 is how many more patients? 16 more, right? So please press pause and do the rest. Oh, sorry, and I'll, I'll just quickly do the average growth rate. That's pl plus 16 over plus 10. 16 more patients in these 10 more days, and that again is exactly 1.6 for the average growth rate, right? So please do the rest of these changes. Hope you press pause and tried it. Okay, I'm going to do it now. 20 to 30 is 10 more days. 37 to 53 is again 16 more patients, so we have 16 over 10 for the average growth rate, or 
and 30 to 40 is an extra 10 and 53 to 69 is an extra 16 patients so again we have 16 over 10 for the average growth rate okay so what do we find is the average growth rate constant is it always the same number here it's 1.6 here it's 1.6 here it's 1.6 and here it's 1.6 the average growth rate is constant is the same number each time So I'll write this down. The average growth rate is constant. This is a linear function. Okay. Let's go to the next step. Explain in practical terms the meaning of the average growth rate. Okay. So what is the meaning of this average growth rate? Press pause, think about the meaning, try to figure it out on your own. As regards the, the, the outbreak began here, there were five patients and then 10 days later there were 21, 20 days later there were 37. This is what's going on, okay? What does the 1.6 mean? That's what we're asking. The average growth rate is 1.6. What does 1.6 actually mean? That's the question. So press pause and see if you can write a sentence with the number 1.6 in it to describe what the average growth rate means. Okay, I'm going to do it now. Hope you've tried it. Hope you thought about it. What it means is there's 1.6 extra SARS patients each day uh, following the breakout basically we have 1.6 extra SARS patients each day which doesn't make sense because you can't have 1.6 of a person that's like one person and another person you know chopped almost in half added on so it makes no practical sense I guess but it does describe what the average growth rate means and if you see that then you would be able to tell right away that okay that means that there's 16 extra patients every 10 days right which we found 16 extra patients every 10 days or you might say oh 1.6 okay that means and actually means eight extra patients every five days or or you could say 160 extra patients um, every 100 days and so on right so but you do need to describe what the um, this number is as a decimal okay so if the function is linear find a formula find a formula for the function okay well let's see time and days, number of SARS patients. Um, I'm just going to see if you can calculate the formula. So I'm just going to, instead of showing you and having you remember something, I'm going to see if you can figure this out on your own. And uh, I guess one thing I might, I might like to do is to suggest that one way that we've already practiced how to do this is to throw in zero days, one day, two day, three days and then try to calculate the number of patients uh, based on that. So if you can do this then you'll have found that you'll know what the formula is because you'll be calculating. So please press pause and write down the number of patients after zero days, one day, two day, three days and this these are going to be decimal numbers for patients so it's just the, the um, the average increase. Okay, not the exact, but the average. So please press pause and try this. Okay, I'll do it now. 
So I'll, I'll do it step by step anyway. So after on day zero, we know we have five patients. We're told that. Right, we're told that. After one day, one day after the outbreak, on average, how many patients were there? Or did we figure out? Well, we know that the we have an extra 1.6 patients each day on average. So wouldn't that be after one day there would be how many? Write it down, press pause, try it. There would be 1.6 extra ones, right, plus the 5. Does that make sense? So on average 1.6 extra plus 5, which would be on average, you know, 6.6 .6 patients. Does that make sense? After two days, what would the number of patients be on average, using the average growth rate? After two days, how about 1.6 for one more day afterwards and 1.6 for another day afterwards, right? So 1.6 times something maybe, right? How many, on average, how many patients after two days? How about 1.6 times two plus five? Would that make sense? So that is 3.2 plus five, 8.2 patients, right? After three days, how many would you have? one point six extra for each day after the outbreak so one point six times two or sorry three plus five right which is four point eight plus five which is nine point eight patients on average and using this uh, you could just pick one of these like after 40 days, use your calculation to try and figure out the answer. After 40 days, what I'm saying is there'd be 1.6 times what? Plus 5. Times 40, right? And what does that make? plug this in the calculator you'll get 64 plus 5 which makes 69 patients after 40 days does that match up with this row of the table 69 patients after 40 days right so the question is then after X days how many patients do we have write down the answer We have 1.6 times the number of days after the outbreak plus 5, right? And that is the, um, the uh, formula. It's number of patients of X patients equals 1.6 number of days after the outbreak plus 5. Or if this is x and this is y, we have y equals 1.6x plus 5, and that's the formula. Sorry, y equals 1.6x plus 5. Where y is the number of patients and x is the number of days after the outbreak, right? And if we were to graph this, um, I'm just going to. Just, just for fun, I think. Uh, let's see. Okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, we'll just graph it really quick. That's the last thing, right? Um, and then we'll use the formula and, and kind of check the graph. So we'll put their number of days down here. Okay, and we'll put our patients up here. And days go 0, 10, 20, 30. So on the scale, gonna skip. Uh, let's see. 
every three, every four, maybe ten, twelve, okay, zero, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, uh, fifty, and so on, right? And then on this axis, we have numbers that go from 5 to 69. So, um, how will we label that X? It doesn't really matter, just trying to figure out to kind of keep all these numbers on the graph. So we're going to use, plot these numbers on the, on the graph, right? So, um, I'll label it 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, okay, that'll do. How about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and so on, right? 90, right? And then we'll plot these points, 0, 5, 10, 21. Okay, now press pause and you plot the rest of these points. Okay, how about 20, 37? How about 30, 53? Whoops. How about 40, 69? Okay, and notice all the points are in an exact straight line, so it's a complete, it's definitely a linear function because the graph of it is a straight line, isn't it? Right. Now, what I want to do is use the formula because you might be asked something like, "Use your formula, right? Use the formula. Use your to figure out or estimate the number of SARS patients might have after 50 days, right?" So we're going to use the formula. We're going to go 1.6 times what plus 5, 1.6 times 50, right? What does that give? That gives 80 plus 5, which is 85. So is 50, 85 going to be on this graph is my question. Plot 50, 85 on this axis. 50 days, 85 patients. What do you get? So 50 days, 85 patients is right here. Will the graph go through that if you continue it on straight? It goes right through it, right? So the when I plot the my formula is matching up on the graph. That's what I'm trying to say. So one thing I want you to do, last thing I want you to do is really quickly, if uh, I want you to figure out um, how many SARS patients after 25 days, according to this. And use your formula, right? So press pause, calculate how many SARS patients after 25 days using the formula and plot it on the graph and see if it actually hits that line. Okay, so you should get 1.6 times 25 plus 5, which is 40 plus 5, which is 45, right? So plot 25, 45 if you haven't done it yet and see where it is on the graph. So 25 is exactly halfway between 20 and 30. And 45 is exactly half between, halfway between 40 and 50. And when I do it, it's right there. That's 25, 45. Which proves that this formula, this formula gave us this point and this point. So that proves that this formula uh, is correct. I mean, it, it matches up with the data and everything is perfectly linear.
Of course, in real life, you know, it's not going to work like that. Like, SARS patients are not going to increase, you know, exactly 16 extra every 10 days. That's ridiculous. But it it might in, it might be a little bit like that. And we'll see that later, that there are some functions in real life that are close to linear, like, like uh, diseases. And, of course, at some point, it'll probably go back down again, which... Is there, but at the beginning, you know, the patients might be actually a little bit like that. Do you see what I mean? And you would be able to draw what's called a line of regression that's close, that that's right in between and close to the points. Uh, so in real life, that's what what happens in in a in a case like this with SARS is that you, you could plot it, and you might have a line that that uh, goes close to the points, and you use that line to kind of predict what's going to happen in the future. What are we looking at here? Are we going to, you know, in three months time, how many SARS patients are there going to be? So that's what these functions are used for, right?